the leaves are turning, the weather is gone. I think it's about time to shed the cottage core life and embrace dark academia once again. Something a little bit spookier, something a little bit witchier. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Have you ever had that moment where you're just doom scrolling and you see that one video and you think, I must have it. That's exactly what happened to me precisely three days ago. <laughs> I was scrolling mindlessly on TikTok. I saw this one video of uh, this creator who does like styling and she posted this video about one dress and she was styling this dress in like a spooky witchy manner. And I just loved it. I don't know if it was something about her or the dress, but whatever it was, I must have it. So I saw this dress and I clicked the link to follow to see what dress it was because I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just get it. However, <laughs> turns out the dress is a hundred pounds and I, that's a lot of money. And I thought, I'll just make it, I guess. I sew, so that's a, that's a real issue when it comes to things like this. But I thought, what a great opportunity to use up some stash fabric to make a quick project, brush up on my uh, drafting skills and see if I can make a version of this dress for me for much less. And I think it's just the perfect intro into like getting a comfy mid-season autumn spooky dress. So the plan for this project is to make a uh, versatile, comfortable dress. Um, that is a little witchy, a little spooky, uh, out of completely stashed fabric, completely self-drafted, and that hopefully fits well, and it's quick and easy. I really want this to be a quick project and I don't want to be agonizing over the details. So I'm gonna take you through, I'm gonna drape a pattern, I'm gonna make a mock-up, and then I'm just gonna cut my fabric. I've managed to locate one fabric in my stash that might work for this. It's not black, sadly, it's a dark charcoal gray, but I think if it really bothers me at the end of the day, I can just dye it, I'll just dye it black. So that is the plan, but first a moment to talk about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Mrs. Quilty, a quilting themed subscription box. With every box, you will get 12 to 16 pieces of 100% cotton fabric, a magazine with project ideas and templates, and a special surprise. The box is catered to all skill levels. It's perfect if you're a beginner who doesn't know where to start or an advanced quilter that needs new project inspiration. I would consider myself a quilting beginner, so it's really helpful that they include an in-depth magazine with projects and instructions. But of course, you can use the fabrics for whatever you'd like. Mrs. Quilty is also the opportunity to join a community of over 13,000 quilters who love the Mrs. Quilty kits with like-minded crafters who you can share your projects with tips and ideas. I thought we could open the box together and see what we got this month. Here is my box. Don't use your fabric scissors. This is what it looks like. This is the magazine that comes with it. Oh, it's got a cookie recipe as well. Oh wow. So it has your templates and instructions so you can quilt different kinds of uh, projects. So let's have a look at the fabrics. So this is it, little stack here. And these are 12 fat quarters of 100% cotton fabric in a blue theme. Oh, these are lovely. There's loads here to make loads of projects. and they're 100% cotton, they feel really nice. And then I guess our monthly surprise is a quilting ruler. Do you know what, I? But even before I started quilting, I got a quilting ruler and it's my absolute most used ruler ever. Whoa, I actually use them for like seam allowances and stuff and like pattern making, pattern drafting. So they're, they're useful beyond quilting, but this is amazing. And I've also got some pins. And that is it, that is all you get in the box, but I think there's enough here to keep you really busy, especially for over a month. <laughs> well, I have a couple of project ideas already that I've been meaning to get around to, so maybe it's finally time to get quilting again. I've got the fabric, I've got the instructions, it's time. If you too would like to start or upgrade your quilting journey, follow the link in the description box below and use my code CAT20 to get 20% off your first box. Now. Let's get to sewing. OK, 
Okay, so I think I'm going to leave the mock-up here, so I just wanted to talk to you very briefly. Uh, this is the second mock-up, technically, and only really the front needed adjustments. The back is alright, um, but as you can see here, I've left it open at the front because that'll be just easier to fit on myself, um, but naturally it will have a side seam zipper. So um, uh, there's a couple of changes I still need to make, which is I'm going to add half an inch to the front here because this is with seam allowance and that's kind of where I want the neckline to finish. I had to cut away at the armhole a lot because it was way too tight um, and so I've cut away there. I think in general in terms of sizing it's all right now um, but there's still some, because I, ro I rotated a dart out, there's still some odd shaping here so I'm going to straighten out this so that there's less excess here so it should sit more like this and this is the panel that's going to be smocked so I still need uh, I'm confident that it fits all right in terms of like just general fit at the moment and so now I'm going to make it times 1.5 its actual size so that once it's smocked um, it'll be the right size hopefully <laughs> and I think I'm just going to proceed with it because um, this is not meant to be like a super complicated project for the skirt, I'm just going to use a skirt pattern that I already have from a previous project and so um, I can show you what that pattern looks like once I've finalised all the bits and I can lay it out so you can see the whole pattern. Okay, so here is the final bodice pattern. You can see it looks a bit odd and that's because technically I had a very large bust dart here which I've rotated out so it creates this kind of oddly shaped but the mock-up worked so I'm confident I can make it work. So it's just a two-piece bodice, super simple and then around the under bust there is just a straight rectangle which is going to be the smocked placket. So I'm just going to smock the whole thing and this was the original measurement which you can see is cut on the fold and it'll have a side seam. Um, a side seam closure for the side zipper and I've expanded it to allow for the smocking so I did it 1.5 times and then I added some extra and the skirt pattern is over here and it is just based on my very typical skirt pattern it has a um, basically it has this is the side front or side back and then it has a back and a front and this is just adapted from a historical skirt pattern and instead of doing the proper thing where you cut one side to front and then one side front and then there's a different pattern for the back and the side back I just do it all the same and I did this for my pinafore dress last couple years ago and it worked really well so that's what I'm going to do and I've dug out a sleeve from a previous dress so yeah minimal patterning is my hopes for this and now I just need to cut it out oh my god you guys I was determined to use this fabric for my stash because I was determined to use stash fabric and this was the only one that would work but I don't have, didn't have a lot of it left and after I tried to lay out the pieces on the fold like when it's folded I, it wouldn't, could, wouldn't be done but I thought maybe if I open it out and cut out every single piece individually it would work and I've just managed to make it fit so I have just enough on there for two sleeves so after sweating around on the floor for an hour and a half, maybe two. Oh boy. I will cut this out of a stash fabric. Success. It's time for a shirring. So I think what actually really makes this dress fit so nicely, or at least look like it fits so nicely, is the massive shirred panel across the waist. And so I really wanted to keep that. So for my pattern, when I drafted it, I made it so that it fit nicely. And then I added 1.5 to the pattern. And that's just what I found worked for things I've shirred in the past. So shirring, in case you're new to shirring, it is when you add a elastic thread to the bobbin of your machine. In this case, I did it by hand. That's how I recommend so you can really control the tension. And then you fiddle with your machine settings. In my case, mine is the highest tension it'll go to, which is nine. And then I've done it off on four. I've done it on 4.5 before. It really depends on the weight of your fabric as well. Um, I've just done a little sample here so you can see. It kind of just scrunches up the fabric and I can't really do it with one hand, but it does make it elastic. So what this means is that there's extra slack in this dress that it will stretch to accommodate when needed. So it should make it really comfortable and versatile. And so I've marked on my panel the rows of uh, smocking or shirring that I'm going to be doing, which are just half an inch apart, three quarters of an inch from the top, because this has a half an inch seam allowance to sew to the rest of the bodice. And then it has uh, rows half an inch apart 
and I've cut this all in one uh, except for one little bit because I messed up sewing <laughs> I messed up cutting and I just needed to piece this little bit in but it's just one one long rectangle so I'm just gonna sew those rows of shirring right now um, and yeah I'm I'm hopeful that it's going to look and work nicely What is this? It's a pocket! I just wanted to show you that I remembered to put a pocket in before I sew up the side seams. So um, typically you'd want two pockets, but I'm putting in a side seam zipper and you can add a pocket with that, I just can't be bothered with the faff. So I'm only having a right hand side pocket, which is what I'm adding here, just in between the side seams of the skirt. Um, and I've just stitched it on with a smaller seam allowance and then I understitch it, which really helps, helps it not peek through when you're wearing it. And now I'm just going to sew up this seam following this pattern here all the way down and then I can start assembling the rest of the seams. And because everything's overlocked I don't need to do any fancy finishing so should be pretty quick. So I think I'm going to assemble all of the skirt and then all of the bodice and then baste them together and try it on and see, see where we are. Always try stuff on. So here is my bodice as it stands. I'm about to sew the shirt panel to the top of the bodice. I've done all of the seams and I've pressed them. And obviously because it's overlocked, it doesn't need anything else to be done to it. But I just wanted to point out that I did have to chop off a bit of the shirring. I just held it up to my waist until it kind of worked the way I wanted it to. And then what I did was I just sewed quite dense amounts of stitches across all of the elastic lines. And then I just chopped it off and um, overlocked the raw edge again. So um, obviously this, the math depends on like uh, the tension on your machine and how tightly it's gathering it up and stuff. So, you know, just adjust it to what you like and what works for you, I think. And then I kind of had to fudge it to match the bottom here, um, but I think it'll be fine. So it's, it's, it's a little bit longer than the actual bottom edge of this, but I'm praying it's gonna work fine. And something I'm gonna do as I sew it by machine is that I've put the largest piece um, on the bottom because typically machines, this bottom part actually feeds a bit faster than the top one. Um, and so I'm gonna hope that that helps ease in that little bit of excess fabric as well. But yeah, I'm gonna sew that up and then I'm gonna press it and then I'm gonna try it on. And I've left a gap at the left side seam for the zipper. The leaves are changing! Welcome to tonight's installment of Late Night Sewing. So I've been working away on the dress. I've... As you can see, it's looking like a dress. I think it looks pretty cute. Um, there are some fit issues. I'm really regretting having rotated the dart out. I think just messed up with the pattern too much and now it looks a bit odd. So if you're doing this, I would recommend leaving the dart in <laughs> if you drape your own pattern. But basically, I've added in the shirt bit, 
that's all fine. I've left a gap on the left hand side so that I can put a zipper in. I've tested it for size and I did end up letting out this a little bit. And the other thing I did was that I went back and rewatched the TikTok that made me fall in love with this kind of dress. And what I really loved was how she kind of pulled this so it was like a bit off the shoulder. But I was noticing that um, mine was fitting too tightly to be able to do that comfortably. So I actually took the leftover bit of shirring that I'd cut off that was too big and I added it to the shoulders here and it added just enough slack so they can comfortably sit off the shoulder if needs to. So that's a cute little tip I would recommend. And the other thing I've noticed is that when I try it on, there is some like extra fabric here. I think because this is cut on the bias, it just warps and stretches a bit out of shape. So I'm just going to run a couple of gathering stitches to just pull it in a little bit because it's going to look much cuter. Um, and yeah, the other thing I did was I added a facing just to finish the neckline. I just need to clean up here a little bit, but otherwise it's looking good. The next step I want to do is to tackle the sleeves and to put in the sleeves before I attach the skirt because it'll just be easier to maneuver. So the sleeves, the first thing I'm going to do is to tackle the cuff and originally I thought I might add like a cuff pattern piece but I actually think that just hemming them slightly and then running a couple of rows of the shirring will look cute, be super comfortable and will like connect things up. What do you think? I'm going to sit on it a little bit just to think about it, but that's the plan. And then just sew the side seam, gather up the top and put it in there. <laughs> Easy. I can't quite remember when it was the last time I updated you, which means it's long overdue. But here is the state of the dress. It might look finished, but it's not. I've basted in the sleeves after gathering the top and the cuffs. And then to finish the cuff, I did a little bit of an embroidery stitch with my sewing machine rather than like a just stop stitching it into place. And then I used the same stitch to secure the neckline facing instead of just stop stitching it into place. I also understitched it to really make sure it stayed in place. Um, and I think that was the best way to finish a v-neck to be honest, the easiest way for sure. I've also basted in the skirt just by sort of aligning it. I did make the skirt a little bit bigger, but I think because there's so much ease in this shirt panel, it actually ended up great. So I'm just gonna sew it as is. And the reason I've these are all only basted is because I really wanted to try it on to make sure that everything was working as I need it to. And I've realized it's not an exact replica of the dress in the in the TikTok or whatever, but I think it gives the same vibe and feeling and that's what I really wanted. And it's super comfortable because of the shirt panel. So the next things I need to do is to actually sew the, uh, the sleeves in, then the waist seam. And then I need to put in a zipper because there's still a gap on the left hand side here where I've left a gap to put in the zipper. Then I need to put in that side seam zipper. Um, and then I need to hem it, but I'm not sure about the length. So I'll come back to you about that.
I've just come back from the woods from trying to take some witchy photos but the lighting wasn't working so <laughs> I hope that outro footage was good. I just wanted to give you a little wrap up of the dress now that I'm wearing it and what I think about it. Um, there are two things in particular that I think could be improved if I ever make it this particular fashion again. Number one is that the smocking actually makes the sleeves a little bit shorter so as you can see when I like stretch out my arm they could be maybe another two inches longer. So I'm actually gonna fix the pattern and I'm gonna add two inches for it. And I think it's actually because I drafted this pattern to add a cuff to. Um, and obviously I didn't for this dress, um, but yeah, that's something to fix. And then the other one, which you can probably notice, is that the neckline on this is actually quite low. I think when drafting it um, on the dress form, it's quite hard to tell where real cleavage is. So I don't typically wear necklines this low, but it's also nice. So you can always wear it with a shirt underneath and you can also bring up the neckline as well. Um, obviously now that I've got a facing, um, I can't really alter the neckline much, much <laughs> at all. But I think overall, especially when like standing, it's still, it's still a really nice dress. And I just wanted to show you. So one of the features that obviously I really liked um, in the original video and I didn't do when I was wearing it is that because I did add that little bit of um, shirring. You can wear this a little bit more off the shoulder. You just gotta kind of, it's quite hard to do it yourself, but you just have to kind of push, push it out a little bit like this. Yeah, and I think that's kind of cute too. Uh, with a belt or with like anything else, yeah. Overall, I think it was a success. It was a really quick and easy dress to make and I've got a new piece for my autumn wardrobe. I felt very witchy going around, but it's not too, it doesn't call too much attention. Like the sleeves aren't too full, the skirt isn't too full. Like it could be just a normal dress as well. So yeah, I'm altogether very happy with it. And because of the whole like smocked shirt waist here, it is super comfortable. Like there's loads to give here. You can have a very big meal with this. And obviously there's the zipper, which is very easy to put on, and also a pocket on this side. So yeah, overall I'm very happy with this project. Um, if you're interested in this pattern, I'm going to fix a couple of things, and then I'm going to put it up on Patreon for all Patreon members. And also just wanted to remind you a big thank you for the sponsor of this video, Mrs. Quilty. If you'd like to check them out, there is a link in the description box. And if you want, you can use the code CAT20 for 20% off your first box. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all again soon. I have some more autumn makes coming along.